Hi and welcome back to another Abus and Beyond vlog and we're looking at something very exciting today. Now you all at home have been really enjoying looking at the Ford Transit based camper vans. So today we've got another one for you. This one is by Westphalia and this is the Westphalia Kelsey. at the front of this Ford base camper. Now, this has got the typical Ford Transit stylings at the front. It's finished in this azure blue, which is gorgeous. I really like it. It's kind of like a dark blue, but very sort of sea-like, very nice. Now, this one is a two litre diesel that is fitted to an automatic gearbox. Working our way down the driver's side, you'll see that this blue is actually quite a metallic blue in this sort of light. It's got alloy wheels. You've got a habitation door here. You actually have one on the other side as well, which we'll come to in a minute. You've got the wastewater outlet underneath the van here too. And you'll notice that there's a window in the habitation door, but not a window in the back here. This is just a decal, this is a Westphalia decal. And then also you've got the electrical point underneath it. At the rear here, you'll notice that this is a tinted window at the back. This is an enormous window at the back too, it's lovely. Door is a tailgate design. So again, we've always said that we like this, how it, if it's open and it's raining, at least you won't get rained on. Then you've got a reversing camera there too and this one has a tow bar which is quite cool. On the passenger side you've got the water inlet plus the Truma boiler. Now that is for your hot water. That is not for the heating, that is a Webasto heater in this fan. That Webasto heater is actually a diesel heater so that will drip feed diesel off the engine and turn it into hot air. Again there's no window at the back here, this is just the decal but moving back you do have another door here with an opening window, again, tinted glass on this side. And you will also notice that the pop top is the other way around. That's something that's very popular with the Fords, it seems. Right, that's enough of the outside. Let's look at the exciting part, and that is inside. Okay, so you join me inside my job to show you the interior of the Kelsey. So we'll start at the front. Obviously you can see I'm sat on one of the two captain's chairs. They both swivel. Uh, the leather is so nice, as it always is on these Westphalia products. So soft, so plush. It is cream in this one, uh, so yeah, be careful with your red wine. But let's have a look in the uh, dash. So as Lizzie said earlier, it is an automatic gearbox in this one, which is a fantastic automatic gearbox. The Ford Autos are brilliant. Ford Transit dash, as you would expect, uh, they have nice light steering, they're really nice to drive, they're just very, very car-like, so they're, they're brilliant. The big centre screen in the middle, that has all your radio set up, it, this has DAB radio, it also has sat-nav built in as well, so it's got all sorts of kit. You can spec it pretty much how you want, So, it's, it, but it comes with a lot of stuff for standard, so air conditioning, that kind of thing. Now, if you're sat in the driver's seat, you've got plenty of space for your legs. This has got a bit of a different setup, actually on the passenger side. There's actually a little, what looks like an ammo box. <laughs> it's not an ammo box, but you can remove this and you have- <laughs> <laughs> He tried to knock me over a bit <laughs> You <first>. cheeky, <laughs> you cheeky. <laughs> Although it looks like an ammo box, it's not. You can move it, so it's just Velcroed down. And all it is, is just a little, um, little storage box. So you take the lid off and you've got a little storage box, but this is vital for providing a bit of support for the bed when that's made up. Now this side is a little bit different. You have a fairly big box. Uh, it's got a cushion that you can remove. You can sit on there if you wanted to. And then underneath that cushion, you have a box and that's where your two uh, 907 camping gas bottles live. Yeah, you can fit two in this one, which is a nice improvement. Uh, the box is vented out through the bottom, obviously for, for safety reasons, uh, but Obviously, you can't move that box. That stays exactly where it is. It gives you, I suppose, a little seat if you wanted to, to sit near the table. But yeah, you've got to be a little bit more adventurous, kind of how, how you sit. I suppose you can sit and eat like this. This table does spin round and give you a, it kind of makes it move that way a bit, which gives you a bit more space, I suppose, to, to eat. But yeah, not, not as good as the driver's seat for, for leg room in this one. Now sitting on the two travel seats, which also double up as the half dinette, it's not the easiest to get into. <laughs> now, obviously I'm not the slimmest guy in the world, but I'm also not the fattest. But <laughs> yeah, once you're in, it's fine. You know, you've got 
a nice uh, nice place to eat, I'm sure. You can remove this table, so if you're traveling, you probably wouldn't have this here. You can store it in the back. You still have this issue with the, the Ford Transits where once the seats, this bench seat is shoved right up to the side, you do lose quite a lot of headroom because the, the way the bed is made, the, the pop top bed is made, it kind of juts out a bit. So you, yeah, the ones that are taller in the body are gonna have a bit of a problem putting the head there. But the seats are, are wide enough and they're really comfy, they're really, really soft. Now, as Lizzie mentioned earlier, it does actually have a sliding door on the passenger side as well, which is really, really good. You can just easily open that out. And that gives a really nice breeze all the way through the van. And I can imagine if you sat near a lake or something like that, sat here either doing a bit of work or reading a book on your laptop, having something to eat would be so nice having that view out the side there. Also, the good thing about a twin sliding door is if you're on a campsite and you want to have an awning set up, you still get easy access in and out of the van. You can have an awning on one side and then maybe access in and out of the van uh, uninterrupted without the awning on the other side, which is really nice. Above the sliding door on the inside, you've got a little LED strip that gives plenty of lighting on the inside. On the actual door itself, it's tinted glass. The window does open and there's blackout blinds as well that pull down from the top. And so we had to get a bit of assistance to work out how to build the bed. These things are, are never easy the first time you do them, but once you know how to do it, it's it's fine. And yeah, it's a bit of a jigsaw, but you, you basically you, you use the table as the base. But the good thing about the uh, Kelsey is that you actually have these two proper mattress boards. They live in an actual area that's uh, got its own timber door, an actual dedicated storage for these bases, but it's, between, depending on how you configure it, it's between about six foot and six foot six long. So I'll, I'll show you, I'm about 5'11". Um, the good thing is obviously you've got both sides you can access it from. And it's, yeah, it's a, it's a lot more comfortable really than it looks. But yeah, that's, that's plenty big enough. You could, if you were taller, you could actually spin this seat round as well sideways so that you've got a bit more leg room. Yeah, you can just move it around how you like, but this, this is actually pretty comfortable. This is good, and you can still get access to the toilet in the back as well, which is good. So let's take a look at the kitchen. On the end, you have a couple of switches. They're both for, for lights. You've got the mood lighting at the bottom, and then the, the brighter lights for actually working above. Underneath the two light switches, you've got a pull-out drawer, and that's got three different compartments. It's got a little um, drawer in the top, maybe for cutlery, possibly. Another drawer underneath, like another shelf underneath. I don't know how you would really access that. You know, you've got to, it's, it's for very small things because of the angle that you'd have to put the stuff in. You can't fit cans in there, I wouldn't have thought, because they wouldn't slide in. Then the big shelf at the bottom that you can fit all sorts in. That's quite, that's quite good. That's nice and big. As we move further back, you've got a drop down flap and that goes quite deep actually. There is a three pin plug in there, which depending on how big your actual plug that goes in there is, it could be quite hard to get, get the actual plug in there, but it's inverted so that the cable goes up. But yeah, not the easiest to get to, but there's also a 12 volt socket in there as well. This bit here is all blank because that forms the sort of side of the, the drawer that pulls out. But then there's quite a few drawers as we move further back. You've got a big drawer. In fact, there's a cutlery tray in there, so maybe you'd use that for cutlery. That's a nice uh, big deep drawer. Another one underneath. Again, same size, decent size drawer. And then at the bottom, this is like a pull down flap. And it's got, it's deep on one side, but then a bit shallower on the other because I assume it's, it forms part of the wheel well but it's got a little bungee cord, so you can maybe fit cans or bottles in there upright. So it's quite tall, but not quite so deep, but um, yeah, yeah, still plenty of storage really. Above the drawers, you've got a bit of prep area on this side, that's, that's quite good actually. There's no extra pull-out bit, I don't think, no, there's no extra pull-out bit. But as you then move to the right of that, you've got a decent sized sink, that's good to see. 
Um, it's got hot and cold water as well in this one, which is fed by that Truma boiler. Uh, then on the right hand side of that, you've got a two burner hob. One's a bit bigger than the other, but yeah, plenty of space for sticking the Ridge Monkey on there. It's also got uh, starter ignition as well on it. Uh, as we put the, uh, the covers back down, We've said this before in, in the previous Capland, it generally tends to be a bit of a theme with these Fords. There is no window here. We'd really like to see a window fitted here just because it's just so so blank. And also if you could, if there's a, a way of having an opening window, it would just get rid of the, the cooking smells as well. But unfortunately there is no window on here. You do have a protector on the side here. So if you are cooking, this is a stainless steel protector that stops the cupboard getting damaged. But Let's have a look a bit further back. Now it's a really clever hinge design on this pop top roof. So it's quite tall at the front there and then obviously tons of space at the back here. So you've got plenty of standing height. Just back from the travel seats, you've actually got that timbre door that you can open and that stores your bedding space. So that's, that's good to see and nice to have. I mean, it's great having proper mattresses, but even better that you've actually got somewhere to, to store them as well. Just back from that timbre door, you've got a full size wardrobe, which is really big. It's got a hanging rail and it also has two mounts as well, where you put the table leg when the table's not in use. So just back from the kitchen is where your fridge is. A, a vitri, vitri, frigoro, vitri, I've never been able to say that, but it's got a little freezer compartment in the top and it's, yeah, it's, it's plenty big enough for a camper of this size. Underneath the fridge, you have a couple of drawers. In fact, that's huge, look at the size of that drawer. It's massive. So yeah, you can fit plenty of clothes in there. And then another one as well. Not quite as big, but it is still plenty big enough. I like the fact that they've really sort of maximized the space in here with storage. You've also got a shelving unit. That's quite nice to see. Again, plenty of depth on that. And then, another shelving unit as well. So yeah, this bit is full of storage. There's plenty of space inside there. Back from the wardrobe, you've got the ladder. This is just to aid access to get up into the pop top bed um, when you're using that. You also have a cupboard which gives you, that's storing the, the shower outlet. There's also a little net in there as well. And yeah, you're gonna put your, your toiletries and things like that in there, I would have thought. Above that cupboard is all your control units. So you've got a main control panel, which is what switches on and off all the electrics. It also shows you how much water you've got in, in there. Um, turns on external lights, that kind of thing. Uh, to the right of that, you've got your Truma boiler. So that is just for the hot water. So you've got two different settings on there. You can have it at 50 degrees or 70 degrees, depending on what you're doing, whether you're washing pots or having a shower. And then to the right of that, you've also got a Webasto diesel heater control, which turns on and sets the temperature of the diesel heater on board. Now, probably the biggest reason why you buy a van like this, a camper van like this, you've got a proper cassette toilet. So it's a Thetford cassette toilet, it's got integrated flush. Now you'll also notice on the floor, there is also a shower tray. This actually has a, a built-in shower. You attach your shower attachment onto there, hot and cold water, and you can have a shower in here. So let us know in the comments below whether you've got something like a Kepler One or Jules Verne or Kelsey, Capland, any of them. Let us know if you actually shower inside your van, because I'd be really intrigued to know if anyone does, because I just imagine everything would get wet. You can fit a shower curtain in here. It's got all the the poppers to fit a shower curtain and protect everything. But I think the main reason you would use the shower is, is if you fit the shower attachment, turned it on, and actually had the shower above with a tailgate awning. I think that's a great idea. I think that would really work. I just don't think people would actually shower on the inside, which for me, uh, I may be wrong, but I think the, the shower tray is probably a little bit pointless. Just back from the toilet, you've got a little compartment, a little shelf where you can fit loo rolls right next to the toilet. And this back cupboard here is actually for your cassette toilet. So yeah, you just remove the cassette out of there and go and empty it at the Elson point. You've got a couple of curtains which draw across and they just 
magnet popper on the middle and close off the, uh, the rear window. Now you join me in the pop top and this is an exceptionally comfy bed up here, really good size, plenty big enough for two people to sleep up here. What I really like to see is the fact that it's on the Froley Springs, there's also a child net so obviously if children are sleeping up here you can put the net up and that stops them from falling out. Also for adults it kind of helps if you don't want your pillows to fall out, that's always useful. But um, there's a step ladder here as Sean mentioned earlier to help you get up and down into the pop top. There are also a couple of reading lights. Very standard pop top, very nice, very comfy. I think this would probably be the bed that you'd use the most as opposed to the one downstairs. Now what do you think of this Ford based Westphalia Kelsey? Do you think it's better than the Ford Nugget? Do you think it's better than the Kaplan by Dreamer? Let us know in the comments. Now the price of this one is £63,341, that's for this exact model. So that's a four berth camper van for £63,341. So do you think it's worth it? If you are interested in buying one, then come down to Harbour Creek. They have this one in stock at the moment that you could buy, or you can obviously look around it and order your own. We'd like to say a huge thank you to Harbour Creek for letting us come film again. And they are brilliant how they let us have this little area to film in because it's very helpful when you've got a little one running around. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. We've got plenty more reviews, tours, travels and adventures coming up for you in the future and we can't wait to take you along and we will see you in the next video bye